ओके हेलो एवरीवन एवरीवन जॉइंड अस लाइव आर गेस्ट्स आर ट्राइंग टू टू कनेक्ट देयर कम्युनिटी एंड लेट देम नो व्हाट्स हैपनिंग सो बाय द टाइम दैट दे गेट गेट अलोंग लेट मी टेल यू व्हाट्स हैपनिंग फॉर द डे व्हाट वी हैव इन व्हाट इज व्हाट वी हैव इन प्लान फर्स्ट एंड फॉरमोस्ट थैंक यू सो मच फॉर जॉइनिंग एंड सपोर्टिंग प्रोजेक्ट ज्ञान uh project nyan for me personally has been an experience that i wanted to share and something that I, that's been my brain child for the last 3 years but for various reason i couldn't bring it up uh yeah i hope this project gives opportunity for us to celebrate life for us to celebrate the journey of life and for us to you know accept every individual as uh as life which is gifted by god and also to accept our own selves and celebrate our own selves i hope uh one one day i can actually do a entire talk about what project nyan is and how did this come together today i wouldn't want to take much of time because we have fantastic guests who are lined up uh with me today are three beautiful individuals who joined us on this call all these three people i know them from different quarters of life and uh, each of them for me as some as been somebody who taught me something in life so uh today's discussion that we're going to be having is around how does it feel being a parent during these times first person with us today is meghna naidu meghna uh and me i think we know each other for close to 20 years now she mentioned it in the, on our previous call and it feels like okay i'm pretty old now <laughs> so yeah we go back to schooling days and uh, meghna for me has been somebody who's uh you know who who's always made the right choices she is not somebody who goes by the rule book she 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 likes to follow the rules only if she thinks and she believes those are right and she is somebody that uh, for me personally you know whenever i've looked up to her decisions in life she takes me by awe and then i'm like beautiful decision that this uh, female has done and she's gone out of her way thank you so much meghna for joining us today and uh, you know it would i we would all really want to know what was, what has your journey been being a parent and to tell you more about what meghna is so that i don't miss out i'm going to read it out for you she is a co-founder of birthing home a midwifery care and natural birth center and she is also uh, somebody who does not believe in the regular formula of schooling so she's a, a parent who is unschooling her uh, her kid from the regular mundane way and she's trying to attempt something new by herself that's meghna for you thank you so much meghna for joining in Thanks, Krupalini. Thank you for those kind words. Thank you. <laughs> I wait to get to know the other uh, members on the call. Thank you, Meghna. Thank you. The second person up is Nritya Kishore. For whoever has joined this call, if you know me, you know her. So it's <laughs> <laughs> she is somebody who has been a part of my life. I think uh, I can't even tell from when. And I'm sure if I go back into ashes, one of us turn into ashes, we will be there till that last minute. this is i think for me she's she's a personification of friendship she's somebody who knows to make choices right and she's somebody who uh, you know who is always again broken the regular mundane rules uh, somebody who loves to celebrate life in different ways i've seen her taking up every challenge that's come to her in life taking it up with pride without running away from it and walking out with a lot of respect towards that challenge Thank you so much Nru for joining this call. I somehow can't call you Nritya on this call. So I'm going to attempt to call you Nritya. <laughs> But yeah, thank you so much Nru for joining this call. And uh, she is mother of a toddler, a 9 month old toddler. So we will have a lot to hear from her as well. And uh, she is currently pursuing PhD from Indian Institute of Science in in civil engineering. She is also a assistant professor at MS Ramaya Institute of Technology. Thank you so much Nru for joining. Thank you Krupalni it's my pleasure joining you. you here thank you Anru the next person is i think my most favorite uh, abhi abhi i know him from the days of quest global uh, for me abhi is a individual that i've looked up to just for the smile that he brings i've never seen him not having a smile on his face and that much positive energy the, the amount of positive energy i should say that he carries a uh, I think it 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 just gets into every other individual in the room and I've seen him celebrate life in very simple things I've seen him talk to his team very well I haven't worked under him or with him but uh, for me fortunately I've seen him walk the talk of being positive 
and uh, abhi thank you for leading us leading the entire community by example thank you for being an amazing individual and uh, why is abhi here is because abhi is a parent of seven dogs for me definition of parenthood is not about just giving birth to a homo sapien or adapt adopting a homo sapien i think you can still inculcate the feelings of parenting by just wanting to do it and abhi i think has a, has a lot of things that he's done and a lot of experiences that he will share with all of us and i'm looking forward to it abhi and uh, yeah uh -huh. profesh professionally what abhi does is he heads the project management team globally for quest global and having a celebrity like him on the first call for me is a super duper privilege thank you abhi hey thank you but uh, let me be honest i am not a celebrity <laughs> i am just uh, another parent like how uh, yeah for uh, i'm just another parent like how mithya and negana and you are so Uh, thank you for making bringing me on the call, and I'm extremely privileged to be part of this panel as well. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, I would love to share the stories about this. Yeah, thank you so much, guys. So uh, today's discussion that we're going to be having is all going to be around around parenting and parenting in terms of three phases uh, generally. One that we're going to be initially going to be discussing about is how to, how was it for you to move from what was called normal. into the current covid period and then uh, we will transit into the next question where we will talk about what are we trying to practice today and then hopefully we have some glimpses or you know some ideas that we can all take back with all of us uh, discussing about when the world changes and we are all going to go back to our previous normals whatever those that normal was when we leave our homes and we go back what's going to happen right all around the world of parenting Yeah. So uh, over to you guys. So Nritya, I would want to know from you uh, because you are a new parent and you know a person with uh, with with a lot of experiences. I'm sure to share. How has it been for you from how it was in the past to come into your you know into the world of four walls with your kid? How does it feel to go through this period? Uh, yeah. So <laughs> uh, it was uh, the pre maternity phase. i didn't have much complications as of such and i used to go to work regularly and i didn't have any complications as of such compared to other mothers um so pre maternity phase was um, uh, like as if i'm a very happy person going around with my work but uh, the trouble started post maternity and actually i was not um, prepared for it and i think most mothers uh, they prepare us for the delivery but they don't prepare us for the phase post delivery and i think that is something which i want to concentrate a bit on uh, sometime later on, later on today but coming to this covid situation uh, it's actually a very uh, difficult situation we have not experienced something like this um, in our lives actually and even our parents to say maybe our grandparents would have faced the um, post uh, pan epidemic but in this particular like even our parents have not uh, actually experienced a situation like this where we are locked down for such a huge amount of time so to come about uh, with how to take care of uh, the kid in this particular uh, uh, in this particular uh, phase is that uh, i was a very i was like very stressed up first thing i was very stressed because of lot of work pressure because i'm a working mom so the first 6 months since i was on a maternity leave uh, it was uh, uh, it was like difficult for me but uh, because i had a good support system at home where my parents were around and even my husband was around taking uh, equal responsibility it was like a, a manageable situation but things turned haywire when i started getting back to work though my institute uh, was like very supportive in terms of uh, providing me with flexible timings i used to have a lot of trouble taking care of the baby spending proper time with him taking care of myself there have been like times when i do not have time to eat food i didn't have proper time to sleep and the work pressure and also yeah. taking care of my family so these were the things that i was like struggling on and i had a lot of stress but yeah. um, uh, not uh, undermining like uh, the situation of uh, covid it has brought in a lot of positive things into my life first mm. thing is i was able to spend a lot of time with my baby yeah. see most of his milestones uh, in this particular phase mm. and also uh, i was able to take care of myself sleep well eat well 
and also yeah. the work pressure was comparatively little lesser yeah. so that way this covid uh, situation has given me a lot of time to uh, be with my uh, son and uh, take care of him and yeah. i think this was something which i was missing on uh, before yeah. and also one more important thing that i would like to mention is um things change a lot uh, with respect to how you treat your family members once um, there's a baby in your family mm. and uh, the relationship with your family members mostly goes uh, goes haywire okay now so uh, this time uh, this covid situation where we are in a lockdown we are yeah. supposed to spend in this four walls stay inside home safe um, this gave us a lot of time to speak out um, any issues as such and yeah. sort out and work on um, how we can uh, take uh, take forward this family ahead so yeah. uh, it was more positive than a negative to me but yeah. i hope uh, the situation in india this covid situation in india doesn't uh, go out of hand so yeah. that is what i'm uh, looking forward to thank you andru i think you know for all of us uh, this i i don't know if it sounds philosophical but any given situation i think i believe has both the good and the bad side it is left to us to decide how we want to take it like for example i'm sure seeing i i i know nritya personally so i know she wouldn't have ever seen her kid crawl dance do all of that if the situation hadn't come up and i don't know if we should say that we're grateful that it happened but i think it's a part of the journey of learning and this is the experience that the universe has decided to get us through thank you andru thank you for sharing that megana now i want to know from you because you know you you're still working i know that you have your clinic that you have to still go back to and take care of things there how has it been for you megana and what does how how are to be uh, to be moms going through this what is happening there in that part um i think you know for a lot of us this was um of course it came on suddenly we didn't have enough time to prepare there was a lot of uncertainty and with uncertainty comes fear so as things eased up a little bit you know people got used to the new normal they started making decisions that were right for them um to keep themselves safe to keep their family the present and the to be family safe there was a lot of panic when uh, the mothers who were almost close to giving birth couldn't find any baby supplies couldn't find baby clothes because unfortunately in india we always say please don't buy clothes before the baby is born yeah. um and you know this led to a lot of people just being literally like okay i'm going to give birth any day now and i don't have anything with me mm-hmm. um what was the most beautiful experience through all of this was how some of our older clients who already mm-hmm. have children you know a few months old um came to the help of our clients who were you know expecting their baby and passed on a lot of pre-loved clothes there were all of these messages being exchanged saying i heard that there's this one store behind this one hospital in this area mm-hmm. you know you can try there there were you know things being done so to the birth home that we could then pass on to the new clients so yeah i think it just goes to show the resilience of uh, you know of human beings that we yeah. will try to make, uh, make the best of any situation that we are in yeah having said that it has been um, you know it it's been a complete upheaval this is not an easy time that we are living in um, we have had to take extreme caution when it comes to seeing our clients and i am happy that in especially in this current scenario we are able to offer an alternative to women um, to choose their place of birth because they can choose not to go to hospitals if yeah. they have a no- normal low risk pregnancy they can choose not to go to hospitals and you know potentially expose themselves to infections where mm. you know instead they come to our center where it's a very low volume center you don't have as many people um mm. you know that you interact with each time you come in so yeah, yeah in a nutshell there's like you said yeah. good and bad in yeah. it thank you so much megna and from what you said i think you know the stories of humanity that i've heard in the last 20 days of 30 days i think is is multiplied 100 times or 1000 times than what it used to be in the past the mm. real human in all of us i feel you know is just pouring out and we are all there to support each other and this is a super example that you mentioned thank you megna thanks for sharing that i'm glad what yeah. i'd really like to know from abhi is how you have managed to keep such a quiet background i have one dog and you can still <laughs> hear him in the background <laughs> and i'm muting every minute 
with seven dogs how how is it that you have such a calm background right now <laughs> well that's a good question you know so i'll just start on this uh, but yeah. uh, it has been my apprehension when when you know suddenly the organization decided that we all are going to work from home mm-hmm. and uh, the companies said you know the prime minister said and we are like you know oh man what am i going to do with seven dogs behind and calls all the way through so it had been a major challenge yeah but uh, believe me uh, the dogs are pretty disciplined i know the one thing that has helped me is realization of what my wife goes through the entire day yeah. um, so Abhi, uh, is there a Abhi, issue with the bandwidth? Suggest, yeah, I would suggest, Abhi, that you turn off the video because it looks like there's an issue with I the just, bandwidth. Yeah, and then yeah, I just did that. Yeah. I just did. So one of the things was the realization that I had what my wife goes through on a daily basis. You know, typically we all say, you know, corporate life is the most busiest. Yeah. Corporate life is the most uh, stressed life. But, uh, you know, managing seven dogs and now I have also four pups to add to that, Siberian Husky pups. Yeah. so you know it is like a quite a handful of job but wow. uh, but uh, but yeah i mean posit- on a positive note quite honestly uh, it has been a fantastic uh, experience of being at mm-hmm. home uh, one is realization for me but more so uh, what we could really get see is uh, the dogs you know how how did they accept me at home there was a time when i said to my wife yeah. maybe the dogs are going to say that boss my fa- my master is lost his job and he's going to be at home <laughs> are we going to be yeah. fed or not <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but no i think i think uh, they are they're extremely happy with my wife and i both being at home for all all through the day yeah and uh, quite honestly they are the stress busters yeah. so from uh, from what as a difference i see uh, you know uh, megna is um, when i used to go to office i have no one to talk to but to my team members and only work out over here um, i would possibly talk to talk with the dogs more and uh, they become my intermittent stress busters <laughs> you know and uh, that helps me a lot in my productivity to go back and work more uh, so it has been in my view it has been an extremely positive change uh, so for yeah. them as well i i agree abhi i think you know you touched based on a lot of things and for me especially uh, uh, you know one thing that i wanted to also talk about to the community out here is you know humans make a decision of wanting to have a homo sapien baby for or no for various different reasons and uh, i i don't see that people really acknowledge uh, you know petting and parenting a pet is also almost equivalent to that right and uh, taking that effort of having 10 kids at home or seven kids at home that you have kudos to you the way that you're managing i think that's fantastic abhi thank you so much is there yeah, anything I that you that, want is there anything that, that you that, want to add abhi saying you know how has yeah that goes that yeah. yeah sorry go ahead go ahead go ahead abhi yeah no no i said that credit goes to my wife more than me <laughs> in taking care of them uh, to a very uh, large extent so. yeah yeah so is there is there some tips that you are trying to follow abi especially because you know for, for me who is a dog parent i really want to know what are you doing are you able to take your dogs out and exercise or are you yeah. not able to take them out and what how are you keeping them physically active i think that's a challenge for yeah. most of us nitya might be a little spared because you know she has a toddler but the rest of us i think you know we still have to keep our kids physically active so what is it that you're doing yes so um Uh, so yes as a uh, so one thing is we have learned a lot from the dogs okay? uh, yeah. they are more of a giver than a taker mm. for all those people who are aspirant pet parents or to want to think that hey should we even go for a dog uh, or a pet in general yeah. uh, yeah. i have seen that any animal for that matter mm. never harms you on your on on themselves by themselves you know they unless they have a threat from you so as with the dog yeah so Uh, what we have really learned is they are more of a unconditional um, love giver yeah. uh, than than they expecting you to do anything more for them they only expect love petting and all that stuff i totally and agree. as a as i give as an example to a lot of people okay and no offense to nritya or meghna uh, mm-hmm. but i always say 
that you know once your kids grow human kids grow you know once they start their routine life of going to school college um they would they, at there is a point at times when they are going to say hey i have my friends and uh, i'm going to spend most time with them okay or i have my tuitions i have my college work or school work and mom and daddy has come home and i don't have time but i have to complete my assignments so i don't give time what i've learned from these dogs is that any time that i've returned at home whether it's midnight or my long tours uh, to the west they have always expressed and yeah. shown their love they jump with joy and yeah. the extent that uh, you know one of my dog which is no more there but uh, he had no energy in him hmm. but the moment he used to see me god knows where he used to gather energy he used to just walk and greet me the first thing he would do was to walk and greet me so uh, you know i think uh, uh, even my wife goes out yeah. the first thing is they are very alert that you know we want to come and greet you first so that's yeah. the best thing that a dog can give Yeah. Uh, that's my promise and commitment to you guys okay yeah. but yeah. on the other hand it's a very valid question on how do we handle current situation because there's a lockdown so uh, fortunately i live in a gated community so i have about this is a 26 acres layout so we have about 5 kilometers of a walk hmm. and there are certain play areas so within the layout we have areas to kind of walk through Uh, i have also seen or i have my friends who do not get the opportunity to walk their dogs mm-hmm. so my recommendation would be even to kind of play within the house to keep them active so this is the yeah. right time to spend most time and give to your pet so yeah. that you know they also revert back to you with lot of love so you play with them uh, even small play uh, small toys uh, fetching a ball can be played at home or under terrace Yeah. Also, there are lots of games, mind games that dogs have. Uh, mm-hmm. Fetching, uh, searching, searching, uh, searching the food item within some of the blocks that, where you have hidden it, and yes. they do it yes. extremely smartly. Yeah. So there are yeah. lots of mind games that we can use to kind of keep their energy levels high, yeah. and also equally consume their energy because dogs have a lot of energy in them, and they have yeah. to they have to break open that energy, otherwise they become. destroyer right so it's yes. important this is a fantastic time we can all spend time with yeah. them uh, there's also yeah. another suggestion i would do is have cycling you know if you can cycle your dog for um, a few meters mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. it would be a good run for him yeah yeah you know? so uh, there are these kinds of activities that you can keep uh, uh, the dogs very busy and active with yeah. or you can do search games so you yeah. hide yeah. a toy of his somewhere mm. in the house yeah. and you ask them to search and slowly they learn that command of search and they'll start sniffing around the house yeah. exactly stop or try to fetch that in yeah yeah it's yeah. like fun game you know yes i in fact have tried that search game abhi and i think it has helped so for a lot of us i think a lot of tips <clears throat> especially that you told us on you know how to manage especially dogs Nritya and Meghna, I would want to know from you guys, what is it that you guys are doing, and how are you keeping them physically active? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I have a lot of toys. So yeah. in each and every room, there are a lot of toys, and uh, we do not have a pet dog at home. But there mm-hmm. is a dog in our apartment, and my son loves the dog. Every mm-hmm. morning he has a routine. As soon as he wakes up, he cannot mm-hmm. actually say the word doggy, so he says the word oggy. and he waits for us to take him out um we do not allow him to touch uh, the dog because uh, uh, it's a mm. it's not a, a it's not somebody's pet and Correct. he is not so well taken care of uh, mm. but we always are around the uh, doggy mm. and my my son loves uh, the particular dog <laughs> and i actually want to ask abhi and uh, megna uh, is it a good idea to uh, have a pet a doctor pet um so that uh, my son can grow along with uh, 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 a puppy um i would actually say it's quite a it's quite a big responsibility mm-hmm. i know i don't know abhi if you'll have a completely different perspective mm-hmm. but um, from in my opinion this is as important as any other addition to your family that you would do um, mm-hmm. just you know it is a fourth member 
it is yeah. someone new coming in with their own temperaments and their own needs and their own requirements and um, i would actually recommend anyone who's considering adopting a pet uh, to first talk to a dog and baby expert there are um, you know specific um, professionals who can help you understand how you can have a peaceful um, sort of a home which can incorporate both a dog and a baby mm-hmm. and many times we see for example pregnant clients who already have a dog who haven't quite thought about what is going to happen when there's a new baby added to the mix or you have um, you know parents with young babies like yourself with you who also ad- adopt a dog but just like having a baby are not quite prepared for what it really means so yeah i think you mentioned that very well uh, megna especially because you know you have to be prepared to even bring a dog home i think with you uh, it's it's a journey that you have to go through like how you went through pregnancy i'm sure it's a journey is it, isn't that right abhi abhi are you around <coughs> well yes uh, am i audible yes yes okay so uh, yeah megna i mean i would have uh, some more tips to it okay i wouldn't say that it's completely uh, a lot of work yes it is a lot of work in the initial days but let me tell you uh, nritya uh, there is a way to introduce newborn babies to the already existing pet that you have and the hmm. simplest of the simplest way is when you, when the mother is at the hospital and the baby is at the hospital that the father start introducing baby clothes to the dog right. at home and he starts yeah. sniffing them over days and days every day you change, you get those clothes back home before you wash you hmm. you get the dog sniff those hmm. and over a period of time by the time the mother returns and the baby returns from hospital to home the dog feels that he's a part of the family because i have been sniffing that smell every day and i think it's a part of the family so it accepts really very fast um yeah. now we had the reverse situation when my sister was uh, sister gave birth uh, uh, to a baby girl and then we adopted a german shepherd and believe me or not the german shepherd is a fantastic breed it stayed and it at just uh, uh, 50 days you know it stayed just below my niece's cradle and every time my niece would wake up it would run to us Yeah. Uh, and it would bark very protective <laughs> right very protective yeah. breed of hey, if, if, is it is something happening to the niece but yes there is a little more work because mm-hmm. even the pup is going to be a very small pup and he requires or he or she requires attention right mm-hmm. uh, my suggestion or my advice to many people who who come to me as uh, my clientele um mm-hmm. if you if you're getting a dog for your kids then let the kids start taking responsibility and then you take the dog because yeah. most kids will say yeah i want a dog i will take responsibility when but when they go back to their home with the dog the whole responsibility lies back onto the mom at home oh, mom yes. at home. so so you know let them be like about uh, 13 12 to 13 years old kids you know they understand and they also have a longing to come home as soon as the school is over they have longing to come <laughs> home because i have my brother or my sister waiting for me my four like yeah. brother or sister waiting for me so that kind of a bonding is amazing okay so yes. i my recommendation is if you want to get a dog and you already have a child wait for some more years you know, when they are like uh, anywhere bit about 10 years i think that mm. that's the right time they understand the responsibilities but if you have a dog already at home then let him get used to the smell of uh, your baby and he will yeah. accept it but it's a yeah, fantastic it's a good... uh, bonding by the way any breed yeah it's a very Super. good suggestion yeah. abhi Yeah, thank you. I think you know you you made life so simpler for all the listeners and all the people who are following following us. I see a lot of them wishing us and saying you know all the best, and they're all super excited to hear. I see a lot of thumbs up and love going in there. So yeah, if I have to quickly ask all of you to tell me you know to to tell all the parents out here five tips that you think has worked for you during these lockdown times. What are those five things that you guys have practiced personally? and you think you know you you would want to share it with the uh, other moms out there or other parents out there uh megna can i start with you so if you can tell us saying you know what are those five things that sure. you would have to look at yeah well i tried hiding but that didn't work <laughs> 
so we had to quickly move on to other things um mm-hmm. it's been quite challenging krupa we have mm-hmm. had to sort of reinvent things on a regular basis and you know with children there's always a phase that they're going through which is developmentally mm-hmm. um needed it's not just developmentally expected it's actually needed for them to go through certain things and yeah. it starts as early as 2 weeks you have babies who you know who've been doing one thing and suddenly a 2 week old is behaving like a completely new baby and that just continues throughout yeah. till their um, you know adolescence and even further so i have been lucky to have a uh, you know a really good support system i have um, you know very understanding parents and in-laws and i have friends who have been in the same boat as i ha- i have mm-hmm. and i think what was most important to me i wouldn't even say it's five tips but what was most important to me is knowing that it's okay to be vulnerable knowing that it's okay to not have it together all the time um mm-hmm. that you know you can also as a mother experience anger frustration helplessness and only when you're vulnerable and you're asking for help you'll get that help yeah we often try to you know make it seem like everything's perfect you know yeah. for example the introduction that i sent you i um, i thought about it for a very long time what yeah. am i you know mm. really how would i describe myself and mm. it seems so polished and so perfectly manicured to say sure i'm an unschooling mother to a four year old but yeah. it's not been that simple i mean it never is that simple so i think um, knowing when to just ask for help and knowing mm. to say that it's okay you don't have it together all the time but you'll kind of figure out a way and yeah. also to know that change is constant that's like the biggest cliche out there and the yeah. biggest truth out there that things will always change they won't get better <laughs> they yeah. may not get better we don't want to especially tell new parents this don't worry in a few months things will mm. get better no there's mm. always going to be new challenges but they will change and i, I think that's very helpful when you feel very stuck and you feel very locked in to know yeah. that things will change so that's my my take away from what you said megna is that beautiful line of you know it's okay to be vulnerable uh, i don't know how many of us really accept that fact and say it's really okay to lose your cool it's really okay to not be perfect i think you know we all are chasing that perfect followed by whatever is the role perfect mother perfect daughter perfect wife perfect uh, whatever roles that we play at work and i think you know it's 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 so nice to hear and to accept saying you know it's okay to be vulnerable thank you so much megna for whatever you said and it makes total sense in every word that you mentioned and i'm sure all the parents out there who are who joined us today will have a lot to learn from here before i go to the next participant i want to let the community watching us know that we will be taking questions from here if in case you have any questions related to parenting please do put it up here whatever that any of the three of my guests know or i know we will for sure try and attempt and try helping you out there yeah thank you nitya over to you five tips that you want to give what do you think has worked oh uh, yeah uh, so as i was mentioning earlier yeah. uh, the like baby uh, once you bring in the baby to this world there are different phases of its life say the first 3 months is different then the next 3 months is different the first year is going to be different and yeah. each um, each such phase will have its own requirement and yeah. it's very challenging as a new mother and we are absolutely not prepared for it yeah. and uh, at this time the support system is one thing that is most important so for me in this lockdown period what i found was like very important is to communicate it is to communicate with your su- uh, with the support system what your problems are yeah. and um, i hope uh, i was lucky enough to have a good support system at my home mm-hmm. my husband is very understanding my in-laws are very supportive so that way it was quite um, it was it was easier for me and mm-hmm. so this lockdown period we communicated with each other so yeah. there are many families um, that they're just stuck to social media playing games uh just immersing themselves into what they like but i think this is a time when we should think of it as a family um how we can go ahead yeah. uh yeah from earlier we had a joint family now we're moving on to nuclear family i don't mm-hmm. want to see a phase where we all stay just single so i want yeah. this family system to go ahead and yeah so we need to communicate so communicate is the communication is the most important thing yeah. and uh, yeah so that is what has helped me out a lot so okay. we communicated our problems 
and they were very understanding and uh, yeah so i i would say at least the remaining lockdown period people should communicate uh, with their family members uh, yeah. spend good time with them and uh, enjoy little little things in their lives and continue doing so even after the lockdown period has been removed and yeah. uh, one more important thing is fitness uh, you should take care of your fitness health is most important yeah. uh, it is more important than money or anything else uh, so we have to consider our fitness and uh, yeah so communication fitness and uh, sharing spreading love happiness i think these are the things that uh, we have to concentrate on in this uh, tough times yeah thank you anrithya i think wonderfully said super duper tips even if i'm not a mother i'm sure you know these tips i can still put it as a part of my life right thank you abhi over to you what are your tips what do you think that as yeah, pet so parents we can do yeah so first and foremost i should yeah abhi we can't hear you well uh okay first and foremost i should compliment nitya uh, because uh, she has given fantastic tips okay even some of those uh, which are like exercising are mm-hmm. applicable to many of no, many of us over here on the call at times <laughs> yeah yeah uh, okay so from my side i think uh, first and foremost you know we we look at uh, if you look at our regular time we end up spending time with the dogs when we have time Yeah. Now, this is the time where we can bond so please my suggestion is to spend more time with the pets mm-hmm. best way to spend time with them is feed a feeding time then grooming time mm-hmm. it's a time to actually you know just 5 minutes of grooming and they feel such a pleasure to have the touch and feel of your hands yeah uh, uh, that's the best thing to do give them bath yourself okay yeah. um uh, you might find and it's silly but my wife and i speak with our dogs in our local language which is marathi hmm. dogs don't understand languages but they understand emotions yeah. and they really understand it so spend your time teaching your dog to understand those emotions the more you talk with them the more you engage with them they are yeah. going to reciprocate the in the best way they can okay yeah so in my view again this is the time to bond take a break from your office works and engage with them and yeah. again as vitya said i would certainly say that exercising is important to so spend time um mm-hmm. with them as well you know so yeah. and uh, rupa as you as you actually said you know it's really okay to have um disruptions i mean even now on this call you know mm-hmm. uh, megna and i probably are having these internet issues uh, yeah. fluctuations yeah. what happens is uh, when i had the apprehension to come home home and start working it was a big concern but then you know everyone in my office knows that you know i am a crazy dog lover my wife is a crazy dog lover and that's our first priority yeah so having some small background noises of your dogs did not create a problem so it's okay because we are not in a country where we are ready with uh, the entire infrastructure right when we are born Yeah. So let's admit that, okay? And everyone who's working with us, I realize that, yes. okay? We are more judgmental. Oh, how would others think? Instead of that, let's accept what our environment is yes. and present that environment to the truth it is, right? So yes. I think it's okay to have disruptions. Yeah, and I think our call is a true example of you know we are still okay with not having an exactly perfect uh, situation. Life still goes on, right? and i think covid has really taught us that saying you know life goes on and life remains to be the way it has to be just the way that we think it has to be or it could oh i can see the dogs oh. <laughs> <laughs> so okay I, i lost focus <laughs> yeah they beautiful hi hello <laughs> so yeah i think you know these times have taught us that these times have taught us saying imperfections are okay and they're beautiful as well yeah so yeah to to get on to our next thing i see questions are starting to come over so uh, let's keep uh, hearing from the community out there if they have any specific questions to any of you guys uh, to the last part of our conversation uh, now it's all going to come to an end sometime right we are positive about it saying the country is going to find some solutions and we also know that lockdown is kind of getting relaxed what's going to change how is it going to change psychologically for you as a parent and also For the kids, 
what is it that you you would say that we all have to be prepared with what are your tips on that megana do you want to go first um for us you know i think it's going to be a very very long time before life really goes back to the normal as we knew it um mm-hmm. because you know we chose unschooling it doesn't uh, our schedule doesn't really revolve around uh, going to school which means my son's home um and someone one trusted adult is with him at all times and again i tell you know this to everyone who is asking me about unschooling we are only able to do this my family is able to do this because i have support it would be unthinkable for two parents who are working full time outside the home to you know do this themselves and it just it would it wouldn't be true to unschooling it they wouldn't be able to do justice to any aspect of their life having said that we are struggling because all of the resources that we depend on usually uh, to keep our unschooling life smooth sailing have suddenly disappeared we don't have libraries and museums and you know other um, outdoor excursions that we used to heavily depend on to mm. keep the curiosity satiated to keep um, you know to expand the energy levels like abhi was saying the same is true of children they have so much energy that needs to get out and we used to depend on a lot of outdoor activities for that so we'll have to wait and watch uh, we are going to come up with a new normal because yeah. my my work of course is very unpredictable um, mm. we are very responsive uh, to you know when women go into labor we are there whether yeah. it's day or night you're leaving um, and being uh, an essential service provider we've had to keep that going throughout the lockdown as well so our work really hasn't stopped um yeah i honestly don't have any big brain waves and we are taking it one day at a time and yeah. we're going to see how things change proud of you megna for doing this for us for our society and for you know just being a strong woman i'm sure for a lot of us you are a true inspiration yeah for me specifically every time i hear you i have so much that i learn and i take back thank you for all your experiences Megan can you share more on unschooling and how has this journey been if any parent is thinking about unschooling what yeah. are those things that they have to keep in mind if you can you know share some insights on that sure um unschooling you know seems like a very uh, fancy term for actually a very simple way of life which is yeah. stepping away from protocols and rules and standards of exactly um, you know what is required and rather refocusing on what does the child need um we it is sometimes called child um led i would yeah. actually say you know that from everything that i've read and learned and practice it's child centered so you're centering your life around your child rather yeah. than um you know just letting them have uh, a free reign and just do go absolutely nuts and go bonkers that's not true but mm-hmm. it is child centered and in very simple way a uh, very simple example that would mean um thinking about what is my child interested in right now and how can i fuel that curiosity mm-hmm. rather than saying okay i need to do math for 2 hours and need to do science for 2 hours and then move on to languages mm-hmm. there are many many variations of unschooling and homeschooling and it's a huge spectrum it yeah. always is everything is a spectrum right you can't yeah. pinpoint yeah. it to exactly one thing but yeah. really letting go of those standard expectations of exactly this is exactly how things should be and yeah. instead refocusing um on the child's needs that's yeah. what unschooling's been for us and that means we don't set alarms we don't you know have <laughs> um a specific reason to be in bed by 9 o'clock we yeah. say okay we'll go to bed when the day is over when we've done the things for the day and when our body actually needs that rest yeah. and then we will wake up when our body has had that rest yeah. um again due to the nature of my work more or less we've been able to you know maintain yeah. that till yeah. now yeah. um my husband of course works in um, you know he works in the corporate industry and for him of course there's a lot more need for schedule and routine but as long as i feel one parent is able to you know be there with the child at any given time we take turns we take over when the other person is busy at work we've been yeah. able to keep that going. yeah yeah 
I think we should have a session around just unschooling Megan. I see a lot of parents because I am also in the education fraternity. I see a lot of parents who are trying to explore, and I'm sure there are ways if we all figure out and talk about it. Because the first thing that I've seen parents do, especially during these COVID times, is they give the mobile phones to the kids' hand. They say, "Okay, you know what? Don't disturb me. Take that phone and go sit there." <laughs> so i won't lie <laughs> that that happens <laughs> yeah, i think yeah. there is a lot of undue pressure on parents mm. to limit screen time and yeah. again it comes down to you know just really looking at why you're doing something is it to limit screen time or is it just feeding into all of the fears that you have around screen time screen yeah. can be a very useful tool in our right. home you know we use screens for a lot of different things Um, yeah. For example, today we were watching this show. It's an amazing show on Prime. It's called uh, "If You Give a Mouse a Cookie," and mm. um, it talks all about how one thing leads to another. Yeah. And I feel I was so happy that we actually happened to live the premise of that show when we were uh, watching that show. And okay. on that show, you know, there was talk of a treasure hunt. So. Uh -huh. we paused the video we moved on we drew a treasure map we went on a treasure hunt then you know a character on the show was finding coins and looking for coins all around the home so we yeah. spent almost half an hour finding a piggy bank and looking for coins and dropping them in i mean those are ideas that of course you can have even without a show but yeah it was really fun so i think um, you know just be kind to yourself it's okay yeah. to it's okay to take a few shortcuts here and there as long yeah. as all members of the family are happy and engaged at the end of the day i think that is priority rather yeah. than I, trying I, to I, what hard. what i think you're saying is it's not the screen time it's the content that the kid will actually uh, be viewing through that screen as long as we have we are watchful of what we are giving them and why yes. we are giving it then i think it's good to go yeah. right and parental can, engagement yeah, that's we can't a big go the thing. traditional way anymore <laughs> I don't yes. think we can keep the phones out of our home and say, you know, I'm not going to be stepping in. There's no TV. There's yeah. no computer. That does not happen at all. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I have a question for Meghna. Yeah, just yeah, go ahead. Um, so yeah, this uh, unschooling it actually sounds very, it sounds fun and uh, stress free for me actually. Uh, but uh, till when do you unschool them? Do you actually are you planning to uh, allow your child take up degree where he'll have to go to a, a maybe a college? are you thinking of something like that or what do you think um, he or she is going to do in the future um so you know we are actually stepping away from this really strongly held on notion that you have to go to school and you have to pass out of 10th and you have to you know pick some like you have to pick what you're doing for the rest <laughs> of your life when you're 14 or 16 you know this is to me honestly that's quite ridiculous because i struggled with that the most um and you know krupa you said yeah. that there's a lot of choices and i really like thank you for your kind words but it's not been a straight line for me at all from the time that i began there was a lot of um, you know turmoil and a lot of dark phases and all of those somehow you know have shaped the journey which brought yeah. me to where i am and of course the birth of my own son um, helped me kind of come in touch with this beautiful world of birthing and that's kind of my whole life right now yeah. um so i feel that the hyper focus on picking a major and picking a degree and going to college usually keeps us away from looking inwards and seeing what am i good at what yeah. are my skills what do i want to do and it's yeah. okay if you haven't found them at 14 or 16 i found mine when i was 30 yeah you know and that's a long time um <laughs> for someone to apparently be without like the thing that you're going to do for the rest of your life so yeah that's kind of our take we are not going to really worry about it too much but at the same yeah. time we are also not going to make any blanket statements and say yeah. he will never go to school because yeah. that doesn't hold with the principle of unschooling if he mm -hmm. grows up and chooses to experiment with school chooses to you know try school out for a few years or sometimes there are unschooling children who decide to go back to school and stay in school yeah. but then it's their choice and yeah. they always know that they have a loving supportive family who's going to support them in whatever they need
super so uh, i think megana the way that you put it together makes a lot of sense because we are not putting it in a cliche saying no it's all perfect it's not all perfect at any given point of time it is it's for sure a journey and for a lot of us especially the ones who are on this call i don't know about abhi especially i don't think i ever wanted to do what i am doing i never even thought about it when i made a choice i don't think dutya ever thought while she was in school saying that she's going to pursue a phd in civil engineering I, I, and i don't think it's the age to make that decision either but if you're giving a chance to your kid kudos to you megna and uh, guys whoever is listening i'm going to be tagging her on a post or you can go back to her post and you know look at her profile and please go follow her if you want to listen more because this female is somebody who inspires so you can for sure talk and i'm sure she'll give you time and you know put that effort to make you understand this <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> thanks megna so over to you abi uh, abi i want to know from you uh, what's going to ha- change abi once you once you go back to work because now it's all good what's going to happen once you go back to work yeah so uh, you know i think a lot of them including our kids as well as our pets right yeah in my view they're going to go through a separation anxiety or a depression because mm-hmm. you know all this while 24/7 i'm seeing my mom or dad yeah Now all of a sudden, from tomorrow, they're going to the office. So my my uh, the way you could kind of deal with the separation anxiety is to start preparing them, you know, with small chunks of separations, mm-hmm. rather than the whole big chunk of a separation at the end of the day. Okay, all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. So uh, you know, I would I would in fact uh, for those who are pet owners over here on the call, or those who are even are having kids, right? Um, i would say 2 hours if i'm 40 minutes 2 hour 1 hour 2 hours i'm outside of the eyesight of my kids or my pets i slowly start having that separation anxiety um, and then yeah. you increase it okay so they also don't feel uh, too much of uh, burden the second thing i would say is also when you do that when you when they're long hours do connect back with them you know once in a while um uh, i have a lot of my clients who have uh, fixed cameras and they speak with their pets through cameras you know and i feel so happy that i've given uh, pets to such clients that who have uh, used their setup to their benefit and they also keep an eye on the pet but also the pet also listens to the voice of the uh, father right exactly yeah. exactly <laughs> and uh, you know uh, have the crate practices as well so you know uh, some 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 injuries would treat it like in human uh, but having a good crate practice is something that i always recommend that's because even when when guests come to your place if your dog or your pet is in the crate on your side he is also part of the whole conversation he also understand who the people are he also listens to them yeah. and they are also the guests are also comfortable If yeah. they are, Abhi, we, we are not able to hear you well again. Okay, so I've switched off. Yeah. So okay. <laughs> I said the guests are also comfortable uh, having yeah. the dog in the crate, and the dog also gets used to the guest uh, over a period of time, right? So uh, have such kinds of, uh, and if you have support, there's no nothing like it. You know, someone who is going to be at home um, taking care of the pet at times, not completely as much as you would do. so i think that's uh, yeah. the way you could eventually work through in the coming days yeah one thing uh, i i would kind of uh, i like this idea of uh, unschooling for first... hello okay am i audible now uh, no? yeah i'm not sure what happened to the net connectivity hello I think uh, uh, Abhi, Abhi, your um, your audio is fine. Abhi, I could be internet at Krupa's side, so maybe you can okay. go ahead. Okay. So one thing you know that is hurting me right now, uh, when I look at India in specific, uh, this COVID situation has brought in a big change in the pet parents' mindsets. you know a uh, lot of people have abandoned the dogs so my request is not to abandon the dogs and this is a platform krupa i'm going to use to just promote saying that please do not abandon dogs or any pets of yours you know they don't pass on covid they absolutely don't pass on covid 
but uh, in fact they are more emotional they are more sentimental they are more attached to us than we at being attached to them so um, my fear is the number of abandoned dogs on the streets are going to go high in india because people uh, are taking some dramatic uh, drastic steps and this is uh, one thing i would like to kind of uh, request people on the call to promote not to abandon dogs right that's so true we would not abandon babies right so they are like exactly. a children so they are like a family so, members and we should not be abandoning dogs uh, in such a situation and they need us the most because of because they need food they all they are, they need our attention so yeah. this is a time when we should be with them because they have always been with us and they have given us unconditional love and Absolutely. it's very sad that many people are abandoning dogs um, for uh, some reason which they don't uh, even question um, so it's very sad that we... so, i'm very glad uh, that you compared uh, you know the dogs with our babies they are they are both the same that's true so i'm very happy that you did that so thank you for me but all i bring but in I'm... a dog it's it's as equal as uh, my baby so uh, it's equal responsibility so i would never differentiate between uh, uh, a dog and uh, a human baby absolutely absolutely so i think uh, krupa is still struggling to get on to the krupa are you I, are you there i do have internet issue uh, i think from my end uh, abhi so uh, what i would suggest is you know if you guys can quickly uh, you know quickly add your summary points i will by then make notes of all the questions that's been asked and quickly connect back i think these are all challenges which have come our way you can all take turns and summarize your thoughts on whatever we spoke today maybe we can start with nitya or nitya uh, uh, yeah she is yeah. the eldest <laughs> <laughs> eldest <laughs> uh, yeah so one thing is um, yeah i was speaking about a strong support system uh, this is a time when we need to communicate with our family members and uh, communicate our issues and uh, try to um, uh, plan uh, things uh, for post covid times uh, and one more important thing is as parents um, both the parents should take equal responsibility of the baby and uh, it's not only the mother's responsibility to take care of the baby and uh, even the father should also take care of the baby which i don't see in many cases so that is one more thing uh, and one more thing which i wanted to uh, mention is um, we need to not only prepare um, expectant mothers to delivery we also need to prepare them for uh, the post delivery phase at least for the like the first two years post delivery we should uh, uh, tell them what it is going to be like and uh, prepare them for it otherwise it's going to be uh, like many uh, many first time mothers going to depression uh, because they don't know what is uh, happening uh, new mothers they know like how difficult it is they do not get proper sleep they cannot eat food at proper times and um, baby is a lot of stress on mothers so if at all the family members can take uh, uh, responsibility and if the father can also take equal responsibility of taking care of the child i think it's going to reduce a lot of stress on uh, young mothers and um, it's going to be less stressful and working mothers uh, support system at home uh, maybe uh, somebody constantly with the baby yes we will definitely be with the baby but uh, somebody else uh, who can uh, be like a secondary uh, uh, person a baby can look up to like mother is always the primary uh, somebody else who can take up responsibility like a mother na uh, mm. when we are not around having such support system is actually very important and uh, my in-laws have been uh, around uh, my baby and uh, i am really very thankful to them uh one more thing is um one more thing i would like to concentrate on is uh, how we bring up the child uh we have to bring up a child uh, uh, like uh, like as if it's not a property uh, we should bring up the child uh, like as if um, the child is our friend and uh, we should just show them guidance like uh, unschooling like what uh, megna does unschooling so something in those lines uh, let them take their decisions uh, in their lives from a very young age 
and let them choose what they want to do in their life. So I think that is something which we which we should concentrate on um, this post COVID. And uh, one more thing uh, which I would like to mention is in my home, uh, especially, we have like fixed timetable, uh, like in the 24 hours, uh, major part of the time I'm with the baby, the remaining part of the time, uh, my husband takes care and some part of the time, my most of the time, my in-laws also take care. So I do not interfere uh, with their time. So the baby is able to bond with everybody in the house. So something like this, if at all we do, um, the mother will also be less stressful. The baby will be uh, exposed to uh, more number of people and it will be more active. And uh, yeah, so I think this is something which we should all uh, look forward to. And um, post COVID times, this is going to help me out because once I get back to my work, I'm very sure it is going to be stressful again. But my son is already prepared for it. So I'm like trying to prepare him. I'm trying to prepare my family also for uh, uh, post COVID situation. Uh, and uh, it's really helping me out. And as I said earlier, communication, whatever problems we have, we need to communicate with our family members. And um, and I hope uh, people support uh, uh, their uh, spouses, like how my husband is supporting me. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, that's the gist of uh, whatever I wanted to say. <laughs> um, this is kind of my favorite topic. So uh, I've got to, you know, add a little bit to what uh, Nritya said. Absolutely, uh, preparation is key. So don't wait for something uh, like a new baby to enter your home to then start thinking about parenting. Um, we do have some great resources available in Bangalore and in fact throughout the country. Every city, every state has some fantastic birth workers whose sole purpose in life is to help an expectant couple um, figure out the next phase of their life. So couldn't be more true. You have to have information. You have to have tools for how to cope. And this is just like anything else. It is a new skill. Just because you're pregnant and just because you've given birth, parenting and breastfeeding is not going to come to you naturally. It is a new skill. You are going to, there is a learning curve. You are going to require a little help uh, to do this. So be kind to yourself. Um, don't be too hard on yourself if you're struggling with something. Um, and, you know, I think there is just so much information out there and so many different perspectives and there's so many tutorials on how someone's, you know, doing unschooling or how someone's doing Montessori led uh, parenting, Waldorf, et cetera, et cetera. There's like, you know, for every parent out there, there is a parenting strategy. Don't compare. Your situation is not the same as someone else's. If you have, you know, X, Y, Z resources, that's great. But if someone else is, you know, in a completely different setup, there's nothing you can do about it. So you do you and um, go back to what resources you have and find the best way of using them and really just be kind to yourself. That's what I would like to add um, to what Dritya said. Meghna, yes. can you add a, a few more points on postpartum depression? Uh, yes. Do you also deal with it? Absolutely. Also deal with Absolutely. And um, with postpartum depression or most postpartum concerns, I would say, we're kind of starting at the wrong place where we're looking at it postpartum. That's the biggest problem in the system. That's the biggest gap in the system right now where most breastfeeding problems or postpartum problems like uh, postpartum mood swings or depression, that can be, it can be different if we are addressing it during pregnancy itself. And of course, you know, midwifery care and natural birth is a great beginning um, to making sure you don't have all those issues. Having said that, I know that not every woman in India is able to access midwifery care. So what do, you know, people who can't access midwifery care for any reason, either, you know, you don't have a birth center in your city or um, you are unfortunately dealing with a high risk pregnancy where it won't be safe to give birth in a center. What do you do then? Even in that situation, you do have amazing birth workers. Start when you're pregnant. Don't wait for things to go wrong to then correct them. And this is very true of therapy as well. We see therapy and counseling as an SOS, as a last minute resort. But I always um, you know, like to use this example because we do, in fact, talk to a lot of um, 
new parents or uh, pregnant couples about this and i always like to use this example of if you have a worry and you're able to deal with it in the normal way you're able to sort of you know go take a walk or go spend some time with friends or spend some time with pets and that worry goes away excellent you're you know you're in control and you're doing you're doing well but if you have a feeling that is staying with you that is not going away in spite of doing the things that you've been you know everyone tells you to do and it's not going away that is the time to talk to a professional don't ignore those feelings that stay with you and don't go away it's always nice to you know the the cliche again the a stitch in time saves nine it's absolutely true do it when you're still feeling a little bit in control rather than using it like only when everything goes out of whack so hello oh, yeah, this is my son here <laughs> so beautiful yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh he's stages arjun Yeah. Hello. Arjun. And he's 9 months old. Oh <laughs> my gosh. Hi Arjun. Yeah, I think he's a cameo for the entire thing. My entire friend group has been waiting for this guy to come over. <laughs> yeah. Abhi over to you for you to share your summary thoughts. Okay, so I just And there are a couple of questions I will take those with you guys. Yeah, I'll just summarize it in a very quick three points. You know, one is uh you know it's it's a great time to bond so please please spend as much time as possible in bonding the second thing is uh, you know disruptions are normal as uh, work from home is a new normal at, in our lives now so accept it uh, the third thing is a little different than what megna said unschooling in human is uh, the new trend and which is a great trend i'm very glad that it has come but schooling and appropriate schooling in pets is a fantastic way to socialize okay and there are lots and lots of small centers around in bangalore around bangalore where you can you can take the dogs for 2 hours 4 hours have them play with a different herd of dogs and uh, oh beautiful <laughs> and uh, you know basically get socialized because they will then accept others also so just three three uh, simple bullet points i would have yeah thank you so much abhi i think you know for uh, there's there's been uh, there's been a lot of things that all you guys have shared over this call and i know there's been a lot of challenges also that we went through so let's not look at the challenging side but the tips that each of you have given i'm sure for somebody out there whoever has heard us whoever really required it i'm sure it would help them out thank you uh, to megna to nritya and to abhi for joining this call however there are some questions which has come up so i will ask these questions and then if anybody else has questions please do post so that we can take those questions quickly uh there's a question from uh, ajay sagar to you abhi he says pet parenting instead of pet training pet parent instead of pet owner i have my fears to adopt or buy a, buy one now I think of guy I think you guys saved a pet are we trying to change the scenario of old times and restrict people and having one just like that we uh, with minimal efforts so is that what you're trying to do he's trying to say are you saying pet parenting is more important than pet uh, you know uh, just being a pet owner uh, do you say pet parenting is a new terminology are we trying to change things <laughs> so well uh, quite honestly a lot of people actually told me that this is the first time they heard something like pet parenting yeah uh see for us uh you know for us we kind of have given the same amount of love and affection and done our responsibility as much as we would do to a human child and that's why we coined this term as pet parenting i don't know how many people have really used that word but including my cousins have actually said that abhi we have never heard this word and uh, you were the first to introduce us to this well i would not ever demean pet training and pet parenting you know pet training is also equally important but you don't need sophisticated training equipments you don't need sophisticated training masters you are the most important person to be involved in that training and the dogs are fantastic learners yeah so you don't need to engage anybody else but have simple training trips at home and uh, that's why you know when you train your kids you don't train them saying that this is a training session you train them through their habits uh through as what they do you tell them what to do what not to do same is the story with pets yeah so i wouldn't at all say that you know pet parenting is different or training is different 
kind of thing. There's just one and the whole encompassing in the parenthood that we are talking about today. Yeah, I, I in fact want to add to it, Abhi, to what you said. Uh, for me specifically, you know, when when there's a lot of these challenges, motherhood challenges that I see recently saw happening on Facebook. There's a lot of challenges that we all get invited for. I nobody invited me for a motherhood challenge because I didn't have a human baby, and I was wondering how. But because you know, for me specifically, what I feel is it's an emotion. Parenting is also an emotion, and it is something that you have to feel from within. Like if I adopted a human baby, I I don't know if I would feel any different than how I feel for Tony today. So I think pet parenting is what we knew from before and what is the present and the future. Just that the like you said the word is new probably but that's how, that that is what every pet owner or anybody who has a pet does yeah and and the word parenting as nitya some time ago said you know will we ever abandon our child if it has a problem or if there is a circumstance so that parenting word brings in a lot of ownership responsibility yeah with us as a parent okay yeah. and that's my that's my take on it So yeah. I agree so with you. We are proud parents, uh, Abhi. So we can we can give a high are. five on that. We are proud parents. <laughs> absolutely. People accept it or not, we are proud parents. Absolutely, absolutely. Good point. Yeah. yeah. There's there's another question for you guys. Uh, anybody can take this question from the uh, from from the guests. How do you parent yourself in such times, in spite of being a parent to a child of your own, uh, which itself is exhausting and time consuming? so uh, they, uh, i know this girl who's asked this question specifically she is away from her parents now because she's staying in bangalore and she is not with her parents uh, yes she is a child of somebody else but how can she take care of herself how does she parent herself that's her question for you people so uh, one thing that i would i would always recommend is take time off out for yourself uh from all your busy schedules even calling your parents calling your friends calling your brothers sisters and your colleagues is all there there is an important part of your life but also talking to yourself and giving that time to yourself mentally physically is extremely important and that can help you balance your life uh that's one thing i can think of anything else that and uh, make no um i'd like to add that uh, it's a process you know it's not a single step that we do something and suddenly we are a better person and that stays with us for the rest of our life everything that we do whether it's the work that we do we are constantly learning so you know it's it's like a constant journey that you're on trying to figure out how um how to exactly do self care i know self care is a word that's been thrown around a lot um you know it 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 can be anything from uh taking time out like abhi said but unfortunately i think that's the meaning that it's used for the most um that just take out some me time and all your problems in life will go away to me the definition of self care that i like the most is try to do those things which will actually add value to your life and those could be something as boring as finally figuring out how to file your income tax returns um that's been like nagging on you or how to you know organize a perfect spot in your study so you can actually get your work done better those are there there are those little things that you know we are so um we really don't want to do and but we know it's like taking away time and effort it's taking time and effort to manage those on a regular basis so um whenever i feel a little worn down and whenever i feel you know just the same thought that anjali um you're feeling about how do i do this how do i take care of myself while parenting a child i try to think of okay what's the one thing that's going to make my life a little easier and get me a little more time and then you know i try and find the energy to do that even though it's really difficult and it really helps that's what i'd say to add on to what uh, abhi and uh, megna said uh the first thing that i did was to jot down the things that i'm supposed to do in this lockdown period and uh, yeah so i started doing uh, one at a time and now i've completed most of the things uh, that were in that uh, list which i could not find time earlier uh, to do the same so that is one thing uh, following megna and one more thing as abhi said 
uh, we need to communicate with ourselves send some me time uh, think evaluate uh, evaluate what we have been doing and uh, prioritize uh, things in our life um, so i think if um, uh, she is able to do that uh, then uh, i think uh, she she would be a better person and yeah that's my take on it and just think, just yeah, just yeah, to yeah, add yeah. one one point is do what makes you feel happy okay i mean i would just love to to an even relaxing and sleeping is also fine as long as you feel happy about it yeah for a lot of us i think you know uh, i i in fact was talking to another friend of mine uh, probably i'll get her on a call sometime soon uh, where we were talking about is it okay to be unproductive i think we take take ourselves uh, like machines and we don't don't even accept saying it's okay to have a lazy day it's okay to just be in bed it's okay if things are not going as per our plan and it could be okay that the last 46 days everything is not as per my plan, as per what we planned but still life has its way and you know life still goes on i think it's important to see the brighter side and you know just just let it be let just experience life the way it is <laughs> you know on a lighter note kripalni i feel uh, we need to have a lockdown say of a week time or two weeks time once in a year uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i think that would be a great idea and it would be a very good self introspecting time <laughs> yeah and yeah the nature is also healing so yeah. we see a lot of posts about nature healing right so we are our we are our family is healing we are healing the nature is healing so um I think this was like a very necessary break. Um, I'm not like trying to trivialize the uh, situa- COVID situation, but uh, it's given us a lot of time to uh, prioritize things in our life. So that's how it is. Yeah. Thank you so much, Nritya. And I think there were a couple of people asking for Tony here. So let me just show you guys Tony yeah. because <laughs> he has more fan following than me on the <laughs> social media sites. So just give me a moment. Yeah. Sure. Sure. I know there are people from Dubai and all who've joined just to see this fellow here. Tony says <laughs> hi to all of you, and he's. Wow. Oh, we can't see the video. <laughs> the cutie. Uh huh. I'm unable to see the video. Oh, is it? Okay, no, it's 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 up, Nritya. Can you see it? Can you guys see him? Oh yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah, we can. Very cute. Uh, yeah, very yeah, nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> he's my inspiration. He's the guy who keeps me on my toes. Oh, I see so many hearts just flooding in. <laughs> This is one guy who has more fan following than all of us on social media. I think. <laughs> <laughs> very naughty yeah. guy, and you know, somebody who's taught me parenting. Somebody who's taught me what it means to be patient. Uh, somebody who's taught me about life in a very very different way yeah so that's that's tony and uh, thank you so much guys to that with that we come to the end of our discussion today thank you for your time thank you for sharing your tips if any of you guys want to go here uh, from any of them personally please do get back to them on their profiles they would be more than happy to support and to uh, you know share what they know and uh, yeah life is just a journey like i said uh, in the beginning it's about celebrating every individual celebrating every role and today we celebrated the role of being a parent thank you for joining thank you thank you grupa really and thank you megha and with all of you thank you it was you. a great time fun. spent yes. we didn't realize it's been 1 hour 20 minutes uh, <laughs> yeah. so fantastic time spent thank you all thank you thank you bali for bringing us all together thank bye you bye. I'll see you bye bye i'll bye. see you all again in the next week with a different talk bye bye guys bye bye